Oh my god, these things are so handy. Not spawn, not spawn. Hashtag not spawn. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this repot with me. This is a quickie, to be quite honest. But I thought I'd update you on a little something something. You can probably see from the title of this video. It's not ideal. It's not an ideal situation that we're in here, guys. It's, it's really not. So it's not going to be a long one. Just want to give you a little update on driving and cars. Can you see where this is headed? So while I do that, I have... I've basically found some stuff I wanted to do for a while, and that is this. Variegated Zizi. Do people still buy this? I don't know. I love it. Um, I would love some in my house. I know it's toxic to cats, but I really want to try it. So this is probably going to be one of the first things that I bring back into the house. I do have... Uh, it's, it's basically different levels of variegation in all of them. This plant here is pretty much green. You probably can't see very well. We've got that there. This one is good. This particular one is very good. It's got a bit more. Again, apologies if you can't see. There's some on this. You know, there's, there's bits, there's pieces, there's little pups that are very variegated. And then over here, we have literally an explosion of variegation. What I'd like to do today is unpop them, pot up maybe the bits that can be repropagated, whatever, and just clump them together in a pot. I have different pots. The pots are kind of chaos. I won't lie. I couldn't find a really nice L-hole pretty white pot like I normally use. So I've got some really nasty ones. It is what it is. What I'm going to do though is I'm actually going to put it in some kind of soil. And this is gross. This is gross. I have here a pot of substrate that's that's literally it's very dry it's dried out it's had another plant in it that, like so long ago can't even tell you there's a little bit of lacquer in the top there's perlite like i can see it's koya mix it, it is what it is guys but i'm gonna use it because why not right why not uh i will be supplementing it with fertilizer just gonna give it some of my feed why not haven't tested it on these but why not why not test it so all i want to do is probably put these into a pot on a more temporary basis, cluster them together, see if I can get them looking nice, see how we do with, you know, these really variegated bits. And when it's time to replant them and get them looking a bit more bougie, then we do that. Because to be honest, if they go to my house, depending on where they go, it's going to maybe be a black pot anyway. Although if I do Elho, I can just change the outer pot. Great selling point of Elho. Not spawn. Not spawn. Just love them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to depot these and I'm just going to give, I'm just going to give you a little update on the car situation. Why not? So how am I going to do that? Let's, uh, let's take this mangy one here and just get these out. Okay. So we'll not do the big pretty one. We'll do the small one first. So you may remember, I don't know when it was guys, but at some point in time, I told you at the very end of a video, I think I just finished up and I was like, hey, I'm going to go and get the car because I'm learning to drive. I'm learning to drive. And I've sorted a car to learn in. Now that was all well and good, right? So backstory, been learning to drive since maybe the end of July, maybe, ooh, maybe July, I can't remember, whenever I told you, basically, is when I started learning, I don't know, I haven't done a lot, maybe three months, maybe a bit more, not a lot, but I started learning a manual, right, and, oh my lord, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes for some people, it just don't, it just don't click, it's just not good, I was so nervous driving, it was crazy, because I didn't ever feel like I had control of the car, and I'm, I'm actually quite a risk-averse person, which is hilarious, because I do ride horses, I ride a pony with a pretty decent engine on him, um, uh, he's safe, bless him, I'm generally a very risk-averse person, so when I was learning to drive a manual, it really bothered me that I was learning to drive on a main road straight away, where there was traffic, I didn't have control of this car, guys, I did not have control of this car, literally, it, it just, I wasn't enjoying lessons, I, I hated them, to be honest, I would have dry mouth, like, 10 minutes in, I'd be talking, you could hear the shaking in my voice, like, it, it was just, it was awful, I, I, every time I did a lesson, I couldn't wait for it to end, I knew something was wrong, um, anyway, long story short, my instructor said, oh, let's do a couple of lessons in an automatic, which I think she said one lesson in an automatic, just to get some miles on you, and see if you can feel better about driving if we take away the clutch aspect for a while, long story short, fast forward, I am end up, there's not a lot of root here by the way, there's a tiny tiny bit of rot so I'm just going to remove it. I ended up basically switching to automatic and ever since then I've been learning automatic. 
Now, there is a car that we use for this business. It's a, it's a Land Rover Freelander 2 is what it is. It needs big. Um, I did do a tiny bit of driving in that when I was still doing manual, uh, which is quite hilarious. But I did do a little bit of that just around like um, industrial estates, stuff like that, places where there wasn't really traffic. And I would do it at night, so there was definitely no traffic. Um, I did a couple in that and all was well. And then I switched. But I didn't have an automatic car to then learn in. And basically, Ben was in a position to help with that. So I didn't want to spend too much money on learning to drive because I don't have a lot of money to learn to drive. And I need to just really, you know, be careful how I spend my money and I, I need to get past as soon as possible so I can crack on because the money that I have to learn is very finite. So anyway, fast forward, Ben finds a car. Ben finds a couple of cars and he's like, what about this? What about that? So we start doing like insurance quotes on cars and whatever. And well, actually we very quickly realized that it was cheaper. Get this. I don't know how it works for the US, but it was cheaper to get a, get a car on my insurance and add Ben on as a named driver than what it would be to just put me on Ben's insurance. Literally, I, I'm actually really surprised at that. So that's what we did. We went looking for a car, but we knew that the car that I found would be on my insurance. What could possibly go wrong here? So we did that, two minutes. I want something to put that in. Let's just let's just drop it on top of here. I know this is like, this is not aesthetic. This is ugly, we get it. But I'm gonna empty this out because this is in soil. This is why I wanna convert them all and just see how they do, because they're all in different things. This is lecker, this was lecker, and this is soil. So I just wanna see how we go. I'm moving my table and now it might not be in line. That is terrible, is it? I've got brakes on one side, so one side swings. Very silly of me. But anyway, so we look around a few different cars and because it's kind of Ben's car, Ben picks the car that Ben likes. And basically we came up with some ideas and basically Ben was like, I'm going to get a car that I think is really cool, whatever. You can drive it and we'll make sure that you could cover it when you pass your test and you can maybe buy it off me. And I was like, all right, cool. Am I like committed to buying this car? Or what? I was like, no, 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 you know. We'll see how it goes, but get something that you would be prepared to have, sort of thing. So we're looking around a few different places. It didn't take us long to find something that took our eye, I guess. And it was, I, I'm sure I'll get a picture of maybe not the car, but the equivalent car, if you know what I mean. It was an Audi A3 uh, convertible, essentially, what's called Cabriolet. So it's basically a hatchback with a soft top stuck on it. So we found one of those, I think it was a 2008 car. It was actually immaculate. It was immaculate, it was really comfortable to sit in, and it drove really, really smoothly. It was a petrol. Um, I think it was, was a two liter? I don't know. I don't know if specs matter to anybody, but that's what it was anyway. So went to see it. Ben took it for a test drive, whatever. He was like, this is really nice. Love this. Sorry, guys, if this table gets wonky, just you're going to have to be triggered. I can't really stop it from happening. But anyway, took it for a test drive. He was like, yes, great. Love it. That has just snapped. Was it very good? No, but that still upsets me. I will put these separately, I think, these rhizomes, these bulbs, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to put them separately and hopefully they should sprout again. But that's quite sad, that snap. But it was very, very brittle, I must say. Very, very brittle. So anyway, we get this car. So from finding the car to getting the car, literally like three days. Um, that's just, I guess that's just how Ben is. If he's going to do a thing, he'll do the thing. It'll get done. So obviously time was of the essence a little bit anyway, just because I wanted to learn. The more I learn with someone else in the car where I'm not paying X amount an hour, the better, right? It saves me a lot of money. I learn quicker. I can do my test quicker. All the things, all the things. Because the money I'm spending on driving lessons every month, because I'm having two a week, is more than what it would take to actually run a car, generally speaking. So I really want to get through this and I want to be able to drive around because I own a horse. I need to be able to see him and do all the things. So from finding the car to getting the car, you're looking at like three days, something like that. And that'll be the day. There's at some point a video in the last month and a bit, two months, where I've said, oh, I'm going to go get a car now. Sort a car. Great. Cool. To learn to drive in. So we went and we picked that up and it was a, why do I think it was a Tuesday? It could have been a Wednesday. Who knows? I don't think it's entirely important. But we went and we picked it up. I think we picked it up. We taxed and insured it, obviously, before we could drive out of the dealership. So it was done on my insurance, blah, blah, blah. And we drove it out of the dealership. I think we went, we came here because it was a local garage. We came back here. I got changed. I changed into all my horse gear. I'm going to leave that to grow separately, I think. And I went to see my pony. I got picked up 
from my pony and I got taken to an industrial estate that I'd been on before because I'd been on driving the Land Rover. So I kind of knew this estate. By this point, it is evening time. It's like six, seven o'clock. It's fine. People have gone home. Yada, yada, yada. I get taken onto this estate and I get in the car and I start driving. Now, by this point, I've only done a few lessons in the automatic. So I'm still very nervous. I don't really know what I'm doing. Then I sit in a car that I don't know. Um, you know, you, you're nervous. It, it, I didn't get a whole lot done. I was basically going up and down one road, round a little roundabout, coming down, turning into a car park to turn around, which terrified me, and then back out. It was, it was crap. But I must have spent maybe a couple of hours, something like that. Maybe, maybe it wasn't a couple of hours, but I spent a good amount of time driving the car just around the industrial estate. And eventually I'd had enough. I was getting a bit fatigued, whatever. It was like, that's good for today, blah, 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 blah. And I get dropped off at home and I'd filmed that day. Hence I'd said on the video, Hey, I'm going to go sort the car. So I like when I film backstory, not that anyone cares. I like to take my makeup off as soon as possible because I actually don't really wear it unless I'm filming. Fun fact. Um, so only, I only wear makeup once a week and that's today unless I go out or something. But anyway, so I'd had makeup on and everything. So he dropped me off. He's like, right, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. So he dropped me off and he drove off. Um, and I was at, I went straight upstairs, said hello to the little kitties, went straight upstairs, started taking my makeup off and took me a hot minute. And about 15 minutes later, I, I kept getting calls from Ben on, on WhatsApp and I ignored them for a bit because I'm washing my face. My hands are literally like cupboard, right? I'm washing my face. And I was like, Jesus Christ, give it a rest. Like you've just dropped me off. So I ignore him. To be quite honest, I ignore the calls for a good five minutes. But the calls don't stop coming in. They don't stop coming in. And eventually, I'll be honest, I picked up the phone. I was a little bit annoyed. I was like, can this wait? Is this important? I'm trying to wash my damn face, right? Because it, it, everything when you've got kittens takes longer anyway, because they're always there, right? I was like, I'm trying to wash my face. And he was like, can you, can you look at what I've sent you? I was like, why? Can this wait? Can this please wait? Can it please wait? And he went, no. No, it can't actually. I was like, why? Why? I'm genuinely annoyed at this point. I was like, why? What is it? What is it? He was like, please just look at the photograph I've sent you. And I look, <laughs> I look on my phone while I'm talking to him. I was like, do you want me to look now while you're on the phone? What? He went, yeah, please, yeah. And I'm like, okay, now I'm confused. And I, I pull up the WhatsApp and I look at what he sent me. And it is a picture of the back left side of the new car. And it is crumpled. And I said, that's a joke, right? Because backstory about Ben, he genuinely likes making jokes that are, I don't want to say inappropriate, but they're just too far. They're ill-timed. They're just they're overly harsh. Like He's just not great with jokes. He's known for making shit jokes, essentially. So I thought he was joking. I was like, listen, that's not a funny fucking joke. That's not funny. We've just had the car. Like, why would you even send that? Why would you take time out of your day to make me do this? And he went, that's our car. I'm not joking. And I was like, oh my God, you crashed the car. What's happened? What's happened? So he basically proceeds to tell me, Obviously, I ask him if he's okay. He is. He proceeds to tell me that he was on a mini roundabout. I don't know if you have those in the US. I will insert a picture of a mini roundabout in case you don't have them in the US. I've never seen one in the US. Um, but anyway, he was going around a mini roundabout and I, I, I can't remember the exact ins and outs. I don't know if I should have snapped that, but I have. I can't remember the exact ins and outs, but he was going around the roundabout and someone basically just drove straight into the mini roundabout into the side of him at a good 30 odd mile an hour. No problem. Um, and completely totaled in the side of the car. Now, what I will say to you at this point is this picture that I'm showing you right now does not look that bad. And I remember because I sent it to a couple of my friends and they were like, because Ben basically said, this is a write off. The car is written off because it wasn't a very expensive car. Genuinely, it wasn't. I think it was about five and a half thousand. It wasn't very expensive for what you would maybe perceive it to be because it's an old car. But, um, my, my friends saw the picture and they're like, no, I think Ben's being a bit dramatic. That, that'll be fine. Like, it'll be fine. Um, Ben just, I, I don't know what it is, just the pictures he sent, it just doesn't look that bad. I'm now going to insert later pictures taken by me of the car and it will show you how bad it kind of actually was. He managed to get it home somehow, uh, but it was making horrible noises. He only had to go, by the way, to get home about half a mile, if that, uh, just basically up a hill and park it outside of his house. But I, I'm surprised he got it home. So what happened was anyway, this other guy drove into him and I have pictures of his car. I'll just blur out the number plate. And he got out of the car anyway and 
he said like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see you, didn't see you. Ben thinks that he was on his phone or doing something. He was not looking. And he said that when he was driving around the roundabout, he could see that this guy was going to run into him. And he, he didn't have a chance to do anything other than just brace in the moment because he knew. But anyway, this guy was like, I didn't see you, didn't see you. You know, swap insurance details, all my fault, blah, 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 blah. Really sorry. Ben was like, we don't need to get the police, do we? It's fine. Um, and it got sort of sorted. I was on the phone. You, you might be able to guess where it's going. You might be able to guess, guys. You might be able to guess. But he was on the phone to them. He was on the phone to them. He was on the phone to me saying that. And uh, he, you know, we got the, all the details and everything else. Guy was like, it's my fault. It's my fault. And I, sorry, I was on the phone to Ben. That's where I was going. I was on the phone to Ben. And I was like, are you sure that this guy's going to say it's his fault? Foreshadowing. And he was like, yeah, yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. Ben's way too trusting. Bless him. He is. He is. He just sees the best in people. He won't, he won't think people are out to fuck him. Whereas I'm the opposite. I assume everyone is out to fuck me. You get me? So I was like, are you sure this guy's going to be honest? He's like, no, no, yeah, he's a really nice guy. really nice guy. Dead apologetic. Blah, 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 blah. Got all the deets. Whatever. Goes to the insurance company the next day as you do. Whatever. Now, the entire time when he gets home, because he doesn't go to the hospital or anything, when he gets home, we are, we're on the phone to each other and we both just cannot believe this has happened because guys, we had the car less than six hours day one of having the car and i kept saying to ben i was like this guy had better at least be sorry that he's done what he's done because it was a brand new does he knew it was a brand new car that you just driven out of the garage and he went yeah i told him and he was yeah he was really sorry but that really annoyed me for a long time so i did the only thing that we could both do to feel a little bit better i think it was like a couple of days later and we were like looking for other cars that were like that one because it, we loved it even though we only had it for six hours i uh, couldn't find one could not find one at all. Now, in two seconds, I need to check how long this has been recording. Oh, we're good. We've got another 10 minutes. So anyway, sorry, I literally, I don't have my monitor, so I have to like squint and see how long we've been going because it cuts off after 30 minutes. So we do that all fine. Contact the insurance company, blah, 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 blah. Submit the thing, blah, 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 blah. Make sure they knew that Ben was driving because I, you can imagine how this looks, right? You can imagine how this looks. Someone gets a car, a nice little two liter convertible, whatever, right? That can't drive yet. And it mysteriously gets basically written off a few hours later it don't look good does it it don't look good but obviously the guy did not know it was my insurance obviously and he knew ben was driving because the whole encounter was what it was so that's fine because I, I get really paranoid and i'm like oh my god what if somehow he could find out and say it was me and then blah, blah, blah. but anyway contact the insurance company always well give your account of what happened blah 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 and at one point or another a few days later we basically got word that the other guy was essentially saying it was all ben's fault and Ben was completely at fault. Now, this actually spooked Ben quite a bit. And I said to him, I was like, listen, I know I, I don't like drive and shit. However, you give me a scenario, Ben, where someone can hit that side of your car. Remember in the UK, guys, we drive on the left side of the road. That's how it works. Where someone can hit that side of your car and it not be their fault. Give me a scenario. And he couldn't. So I was like, listen, you need to not worry. You need to not worry. This is not going to work for him at all. Plus we had pictures and I do still have it. I might have shown you already. One of the pictures I have of his car, he is literally in the center of the mini roundabout where he stopped. You know what I mean? He ain't getting away with this. But anyway, he literally said, it's all Ben's fault. And that's still ongoing, by the way. We've had the payout for the car. Um... But the guy is still basically saying it's Ben's fault. And for whatever reason, his insurance company is like backing him. And his insurance company is sending really nasty sort of uh, text message emails or whatever to Ben going like, oh, you know, if, if you've lied, we're going to we're gonna get you in court. And it's like, why are you even paying solicitors, the insurance company or whatever? Why are you even wasting time defending this? Because it's not, it's not defensible because there is no scenario in which the, a collision of that type. So if this is car A, this is car B doing this. There is no scenario where that is not the guy's fault. Do you know what I mean? It's not like a head-on collision where it's like, oh, but who was it? Whose fault was it? Who did it? It's not like that. It's not possible. I don't know what's up with this guy. He's obviously just thought, well, I'll try and pull a fast one. I don't know. So anyway, that's actually ongoing. Literally, that's ongoing now. So we've had the payout. But I don't know how that actually ends. I don't know enough about insurance because, again, I, I don't drive. But that's the update on that. But I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done, guys. And I don't even mean not done reporting because I realize I've done nothing. But I'm not done. Let me just separate these out. Uh, should we pour it into here? This should be easy, though. Because it's liquor, in it? God, dude, you can tell these have not been touched in ages. 
So anyway, we knew we were getting the payout. So it was all fine with confirmation that was going to go through. They were going to try and pay us out a thousand pound less. They were saying that the car was only worth that. And Ben was like, whoa, I bought this car, what, six hours prior to this claim and it was this much. Luckily, he was able to provide the invoice and they honored the original amount. So he didn't just randomly lose a thousand pounds for no reason. Let me check this again. I'm going to start and stop this actually because, oh, it's here, isn't it? Two seconds, guys. This will be one split second for you. And there we go. So anyway. As soon as we knew we were getting that payout, we uh, we started looking for another car and it took a little while because we've only just recently found another one. Stay tuned for the tea on that car. Um, but we've only just found another one. It took ages because unfortunately you compare it to what you had. I'm not saying that would have been the perfect car, right? It was a cute car. But when you haven't had it that long and you, you're you sad that it's gone, you, you haven't had a chance to find the things wrong with the car, right? So as far as we were concerned, that car was spot on. So whenever we were looking on Auto Trader, which is like the UK's car supermarket online, whatever, if you don't know, in the US. I'm assuming Auto Trader's UK only. I don't know, sorry guys. I'm explaining just in case. Um, so we went on there. Ooh, that's attached. I'm going to cut this. Ooh. There we go. Because maybe this might sprout again. If you're wondering how I've got these, I've got these from really jumbo variegated ZZs from like, well, three years ago now. They don't do much. I, I will say that, but hopefully they will. Where's the other one gone? Oh, it's here. It's attached. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? I don't know how I'm going to do that. Eek. That's one. But sorry, guys. Pause on that. That's one bulb. I'm just going to snap it. You know what? I'm just going to snap it. And if that can't produce something, we've got these. <coughs> Why do I have such a tickly throat and I can't grab a can? I should have put a straw in. Anyway, so we're looking for a car, couldn't find anything that compared, which was really annoying, really annoying. Um, we just love that car. I don't know what else to say. We love the car. There was, we didn't find anything wrong with it. It was a petrol, that, if anyone cares. Um, so that was that anyway. So we were looking for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. And it's so funny. I was having a conversation with Ben at some point, like going to or from the gym or some, something mundane. And we got talking about just different types of cars because obviously this has burnt us a little bit. So we we're just saying like, oh, what would be nice, blah, blah, blah. Because remember, this is the car that Ben's buying. I'm learning to drive in it. If I would like it afterwards, I have the opportunity to buy it from him. That's the deal that we're going with. And we're chatting about it. And I was like, you know what I would love? Love one day in life, I said, is what I said. I said, I would love a black car. Make is not necessarily important. I do love Audis. I just do. I want a black car, but what would be really beautiful is a black car with tan leather. It would be real sexy. I really like it. And he said, oh, that actually, that's quite nice. What about red leather and blah, blah, blah. And we had a bit of a conversation. It was just a fanciful, do you know, it's not like this is the car we're going to buy. I have to put this out there. It wasn't. It was a fanciful conversation about what we like. You know what I mean? It's like saying, oh, I like Ferrari. It wasn't supposed to be that kind of conversation, um, which was just literally mental, <laughs> literally mental. So we're just having that conversation. And then the conversation came and went and then we didn't speak of it because it was a fanciful conversation. But then about, I don't know, we'd, we'd seen other cars first and we'd looked at other cars actually. For some reason, Ben got it into his head that he really liked an Audi TT because there's actually quite a lot of them. There is still a lot of them up for sale for whatever reason. Loads of different ages, shapes, whatever, whatever. Loads of them up for sale. But he definitely got into his head that he liked the convertible because the day that we did have it, we had the top down and it was amazing. Love it. Really love it. Because it is still summer over here, would you believe? For now anyway. Probably won't by the time this goes out. Um, but anyway, we really got used to that. So we did actually view a couple of titties, as I like to call them. Uh, there was, I mean, I didn't like them. <laughs> I didn't like them. We viewed a couple of white ones. I know it's just color, but honestly, I just, listen, it looks better in black. It is what it is. It is what it is. My shop has black branding, okay? I care. I care. I care about the black. So anyway, we're looking at the ones I just wasn't taking. I, I, everything I was comparing to the old car, which you can't help. You really can't help. So we looked at a few and then uh, he dropped me off at my pony one day and he was picking me up. So I've been away from a bit and I got in the car when he was picking me up and he was like, I've got something to show you. And I was like, oh, what now? Honestly, it could be anything. It could be literally anything if it's coming from bed. He was like, I found your perfect car. And I was like, no, you haven't. You don't even know what a perfect car is. He went, I do. I actually do. And I was like, right, do I want to see it or not? He was like, oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I think you probably do, actually, because it is, it's possible. Because we had done insurance quotes on different things. Every time we saw something we like on the internet, we'd do an insurance quote. And just before, to be honest, not just before, people will have said this before now at this point in the video. I might have had a comment already posted at this point. And that's my bad for not mentioning it, okay? 
I am 33 years old, I'm a homeowner, I have my own drive, blah, 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 right? There's a lot of things that take insurance prices down for me, but there's obviously a lot of ways that insurance prices are high for me because I'm still a new driver, blah, 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 right? But I have done insurance quotes on many different types of cars, many different types of cars, from what I like to call bubble cars, which are the very typical cars that you get when you learn to drive or have passed, something like a Ford Fiesta, something smaller, whatever have you, on the road. And trust me when I say, guys, the insurance on those for me was round about anywhere between £200 and maybe £500 cheaper for the whole year. And it would be like a one litre whatever little car. And it wouldn't be something I liked. Okay. Um, the fact that I could even look at things like the A3 uh, TTs and stuff like that, I did insurance checks prior. And the new car actually is less on insurance than the other car by about 100 quid. But my point is, it, it looks a certain way, but in terms of insurance, it, it didn't actually differ very much, which I've learned a lot there. I've learned a lot there. There was some cars, at one point we were just sitting having a takeaway and looking up cars one night, and we put it, Ben just saw a car, like, was like, that's cool. Dude, just for a laugh, do an insurance quote, because all my details were saved on the website, so all I had to do was just do a reg number and change that. Some of them, literally one of them was cheaper than like a Nissan Micro or something. It was cheaper and it was a little convertible, whatever. It was an older car. Um, and I was just like, what, like my head fell off because insurance doesn't quite work how I thought it did. But anyway, we're not quite done yet, guys. Can you believe we're not quite done? So he's like, I found your dream car. And I was like, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. I didn't quite do that. I'm adding flair, right? So he showed me the link to the Auto Trader page and I looked at it and I was in the car, in the car, in the Land Rover, because we still have the Land Rover, right? I was in the Land Rover and I just looked at him and I went, Fuck, why did you show me that? What the hell is this? And he went, it's your car. I laughed, I went, you're not wrong. It was a black Audi TT, convertible, tan, leather seats. And these leather seats were even more special because they had, I think it's what's called baseball leather. So it had a baseball stitch in it, had crisscross stitching down the seats. I have never seen a prettier, cuter thing. Now, another reason why I like titties, by the way, titties, they're very, very small. And I was very, very conscious when I was looking at cars with Ben, I wanted something small because everyone does when they learn to drive, right? Um, because all the bubble cars are small and everything else. And the A3 was small, because I know you can get like A4, A5, whatever. Didn't want them. To me, they were long, didn't want to deal with it, whatever. So Audi TT is actually quite a small car, genuinely. When you like, when you get up to them, they're very small cars. Now, obviously, they're not really a car for more than one person to get in. You can do two people in them. And I don't even mean the convertible, I mean the regular one. It's not, it's not a car you get for space, you feel me? But I, guys, I'm a single lady. I only need a passenger seat, you feel me? I don't need all of this. I don't have children. I don't have anything I need to do. There's a boot in the back. Why not? I have my own house, just me in it. I have my cats, I have my horse. I'll just get the fucking car, right? So forgive me. I don't want any comments saying what you can do, put your kids in the back. They ain't no kids, okay? Personal choice, that's it. But anyway. Sorry, I'm digressing a lot because I need to plant these. We need to plant these. Come on now. So find the car, find the car. We look for other cars, right? This car is miles away, by the way. It's in like uh, near Bicester, I think, in um, down south UK. Sorry, I'm northern. You know what I mean? On the way to London, whatever. Oxfordshire, I don't know where the fuck it is, but it's down south anyway. It's a long time. It's about four hours or something travel. Three and a half, four hours. Long, long time. But anyway, it's down south. So we do keep looking for other things. We speak to the guy about viewing this car and we decide, hey, because it looks so perfect, it's worth it. It was newer than the old car. It, yeah, it was more expensive, but for the money, you got a lot for it. It had very low miles. It was a diesel. The old car was petrol. There was a lot there that made more sense than the old car. So anyway, we decided, hey, if it fits the bracket so good, even though it's far away, we, we said we'd never look far away. The last car was the same from the same place we got the Land Rover from, very local, like 20 minutes out. But anyway, we said we'd look if it was spot on. We're not just going to drive around the UK for any old car, it, only if it's mint. And there was that, and I think there was an A3, the same car that was the one we had that I picked out, and that was in London. I was like, oh, I'm just throwing this in here as a wild card, whatever. Um, but we didn't, we didn't see any of those. We spoke to the guy about viewing that one, and we had to wait a whole week because he was basically like, listen, I'm on all day for a week, so I'll let you know when I'm back. So we waited all week before we viewed this car. Came at all the wrong time, because I've still been dealing with lawn shit here, stuff like that. It was just, everything always comes at the wrong time. Hence, I missed some videos, there was stuff. It's because I wasn't really here, I was elsewhere. But anyway, so we end up going to view this car. 
and Ben's already decided. He just has to look at the car and like it and drive it and think it's good and he's getting the car. So we get there. The car looks absolutely fine. There's maybe the one or two scratches. Obviously you can't see on pictures. There is a scratch here and there. There's a couple of, not dents, there's no dents. There's a couple of scratches. There is, what do you call it? Like the wing mirrors where the indicators are, the plastic that covers the lights on one of them, that's kind of cracked and smashed. It just needs a replacement one of those. It's missing a bloody uh, foot mat in one of the, the, the passenger side, just shit like that. Nothing bad. The inside for all intents and purposes is immaculate. I couldn't get in for the test drive because it's a two seater and it's a convertible. So Ben drives with the, the, the guy that has it in the passenger seat and he comes back and he's like, yeah, great. So the guy that owned it, it was his mum's car and it was his mum's car for a few years, maybe three years, something like that. And she was selling it because I think her, she have a niece or her other, his other sister, or someone was having a kid anyway and it, the car was useless. Obviously, it's a two-seater. You can't get shit all in it. Um, so she was selling it basically for something else. But basically, he was selling it for that reason. So he was like, I know this car quite well, actually. It's this, that, and the other. And he said, and again, you can you can go in your seat. That's fine. But he said, I don't have all the service history because basically my mum has lost some of it, which is really shit. Uh, so it's actually, it's about a thousand pounds cheaper because there isn't a complete service history. But we did that on trust and everything went down and we ended up buying the car. We actually left the Land Rover there and we we took that car straight away just because we're excited we took the car. And we had to go get the Land Rover very recently, as recently as two days ago, actually, as a film in this. Anyway, I need to keep potting, I need to keep potting. I might put them in here, guys. I feel like this is a good one to put it in for now. I did have these, but I, I'm just gonna put it in this one. So that's what we're doing. Is it gammy? Yes, 100%, but we're gonna do it. Let me just get out these. Put that there. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of these in the bottom for a bit of drainage, like that. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Right. So anyway, we bought the car. All was well, it was gorgeous, drove back. Not the most comfortable thing you've ever driven. It's a convertible, sporty little whatever. Obviously it's not gonna be the same as a Land Rover Freelander too. That's fine. Knew what we were getting ourselves in for. Anyway, we get it back. It's about, what are the reasons why I'm looking it up? And basically, long story short, there's an old satellite navigation system in the car and it's by Audi and it's shite, right? If you've got an Audi that's of, I don't know, 2014 or before, because this car is 2014. Um, it's just shit, it's shite. So I was looking into replacing or whatever, and I was looking at the, the model of a car and whatever. And for whatever reason, I was trying to find out what version of a 2014 Audi TT it was, because there's a couple. I think mine's Mark II, not really sure. But I was trying to just figure it all out the best I could. And at one point, it was like, NT a reg number to do this and the other. And it just got me on. I thought, oh, I can probably check the MLT history on this car, right? I can probably check it. I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can. Why this hadn't been done before, you can completely get at us for. I didn't know because I've never bought cars before, right? The other car had a full service history. That was fine. So this is something that Ben should have absolutely done, right? 100%. 100%. I genuinely didn't know. I had to learn all this at the time. But anyway, I thought, oh, I could probably check the MLT, right? Let's just see if I can. Because he said, oh, it's, it's incomplete. I thought, well, surely it'll be on the government website. So I did check the government website. I put in the reg and it was like, haha, here you go. Here you go. Here is your car. Here is the MLT history. And I was like, right, cool, great. Oh, that's what it was. I was looking for the, the, the VIN number, the VIN number on the car for to find out that what mark it was, to find out what kind of navigation I can put in, blah, blah, blah. That's that's why I was there. Anyway, because if you put it in the government website, it said that it would give you that, it didn't. And then there is another button that's like MLT history. So that's why I clicked it. Anyway, I digress. We're now at the point where we're looking at the MLT history. Ben is actually, funny enough, he's not with me. He has left me to drive to some skydiving. So he's driving in the car down, I don't know where, I have no idea, maybe an hour and a bit, two hour drive. He's driving to go skydiving. So I look at the MLT history and I just look and I think, yeah, pass, 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 no problems at all, no problem at all. And I look at a good six, seven, eight, you know, whatever's to, to get up to the present day and it was all fine, all seems great. And then I just scroll past something and I'm like, eh, what, oh? So then I go back and I look again and I look at the mileage, the mileage, guys the mileage. And I go, oh, okay, so it's done this much, that, yeah, that, that, that. and I, I look, and I will probably be able to, I will have edited this in, okay, here you go, bing, I've edited that in, 
And I was looking, if you can't already see what I'm looking at, I was looking at the, the years and the mileage it had done. And I think for the most part, it was, it was very normal. It had done, I think, on average of like five to 10,000 miles a year. Now, that's not a ton. I think the average is 12,000 miles for a car. This one, you can expect a little bit less because it's a convertible. Whoever had the car originally, that leather is not something you get as standard spec. It's special. So the person that originally had that car had it picked out for themselves. They're probably a little bit more affluent. They probably got multiple cars, right? And if you have a convertible car, I'm not saying everyone that has a convertible car has multiple cars, but you see what I'm getting at. It's a little bit more seasonal. I could understand someone having it as like a summer runaround and not their main car. So it, the, the mileage was understandable, right? But it gets to, and I can't remember what year it is, it gets to a certain point and it jumps up from something like 73,000 miles and it jumps up to about 120 something thousand miles. Right, okay, so it's been used a lot, right? Except the year after, it jumps back down to 70, 000, sorry, 75,000 miles. When I tell you that I shit my pants, I shit my pants. I thought, oh my God, oh my God, how could Ben be so stupid? Why wasn't this looked at? This was easy. The reg number was on the pictures. We didn't look, oh my God. I immediately suspected, of course, that someone had fucked with the odometer. The odometer in a car, if you are not quite following, is the little meter thing that registers miles. This one is digital. Yes, you can still tamper with them. I did all the research. It's, it's a thing that is done. So you can, you can do that. And I think the way to tell whether it has been meddled with or not is to go to a garage and have the ECU checked for that um, and see what's what. Because I think that records the true mileage. So if, even if you wind it down, the ECU sort of keeps the correct record. And I think a garage can check for that. But anyway, so I, I, uh, I've probably got the voice note on my phone, but I basically contact Ben and I say, hey, d I, I don't know much, but this, this ain't right, man. Let me read out what I'm looking at. And I've gone on the government website, blah, 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 blah. I've looked at this. I've looked at the MOT. I've looked at the mileage. Let me read out the year and the mileage to you. And I did. And I said, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below and get back to me. And he sent me a voice note back saying, screenshot that, send me it. I'm going to send it straight to the guy because obviously Ben's like, what is this? What it is? What is it? What it is? Um, so he sends it to the guy. Now, I don't get many answers because Ben's now, at some point, he's going to be falling out of the sky and I'm not going to hear from him. He also has terrible signal. So I'm like, shit, 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 shit. And I thought, right, there's plenty of websites where you can, you can pay to have more, excuse me, Nat, you can pay to have more advanced checks done on the car, right? It doesn't cost a lot. It costs a little bit. It's fine. You can pay to have more advanced checks done on the car. So I do it. I'm like, Ooh, do I do it? Do I not? And I thought, right, fine. Because I expected such bad shit, guys. I paid for a little bundle of three checks rather than the one check. One, it was slightly cheaper. You, yeah, I guess you get some money back. Two, I honestly thought cars are cursed. Cars for me and Ben are cursed. So I'm going to pay for multiple checks. So I ran the check through and it came up with the same shit. It was like, hey, this is fucking weird. And I'm like, shit, yeah, it is. So I looked through the checks. Obviously, the, the, the mileage was very odd. It, uh, there was a few odd things. The car is a 2014 car, but the, the first recorded mileage was in 2012. It was weird. It's like, that's not possible. Um, a few things like that. You could see the owner changes, the plate changes. You could see the plate of the guy that originally got it. It was like a super private, super short, trendy plate. I was like, that's the guy that had it made for him. Blah, 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 blah. I can't remember if there's anything majorly out of line other than that mileage. By this point, obviously, I'm waiting for Ben to come back to me. He eventually does. He gets out of his sky and he rings me and it cuts out. He's like, literally. So I spoke to the guy and he said, and it cuts out. So I have to wait another hour to find out what he said. What he said was, hang on, we need to plant. I'm so sorry. I, I, I have just done that to you. I have just done that to you. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. We're just going to group these together. These are the good ones because this here, is it this one? Yeah. These are the ones I really want to look good because they are the Baragashan. Let's just group it. I don't, I don't really have a clear plan in mind with the grouping. It's just, hey, please grow. Group together like that, like one plant so we can monitor it. Let me just pop this in here. Like, uh, like so. Yes, I am going to plant it, guys. I am going to plant it. What are you going to do? You're going to get annoyed. And that... 
that's understandable, you know? But people complain that I don't do enough potting on these videos. So this one's for you guys. This one is for you. Oh God, this is so old. This is so old, this substrate, but it honestly, I'm just gonna supplement it with, uh, with feed. It will be absolutely fine. People are way too precious about this shit. It's fine. It's so dry, nothing is living in here. It's fine guys, honestly. You needn't comment with concern. It will be okay. And if it ain't, hey, I've done it so you don't have to. So don't even worry your pretty little heads. All will be well. So anyway, Ben sends the screenshot and goes, any explanation, dude? He was he was polite enough, which Ben is very good at. Ben is very good at like, oh, let's not assume anything, blah, blah, blah. He taught me that actually. He taught me to speak to someone with not more politeness. That sounds like I'm an asshole, but to, to just deal with people well until the time where you shouldn't. Does that make sense? I, f I feel like someone's gonna get what I mean. But anyway, he asks him, he's like, what's your, you know, what's the explanation for this? He comes back with his explanation. I basically, I basically have to do math to check his explanation. His explanation is that the, the person that owned the car before his mother was either from South Africa or whatever, but the car was in South Africa. And the woman, I think it was South Africa. Um, oh, hello, Rotten Root, very nice. Um, she worked in kilometers and it's come for an MOT or whatever, or it's, it's had, I can't remember where the MOT was, whatever. I'm assuming MOT is English, I don't know. But it's had its MOT and it's just been recorded in kilometers, no one's checked, it's recorded in kilometers per hour. And they had it fixed and then it was set to miles per hour. Also, how cute, literally, I'm actually really pleased with that. That's really cute, love him, love him. Hopefully he will grow a bit straighter than me. There we go. Right, so yeah. So he basically said, yo, the, the odometer was set to kilometers per hour and it wasn't, it just went unchecked, wasn't converted, whatever. It's gone through like that in error. The subsequent years are fine. And he said, if you convert that number in kilometers per hour, sorry, I know it's probably triggering y'all, is about there. If you convert that number in kilometers per hour to miles per hour, you know what I mean, guys, kilometers to miles. If you convert that, you will get, uh, there was 74,000, whatever that, I put the numbers on the screen anyway, you will get that, which would mean it was correct. Now that would mean, because if you think I haven't literally looked at this shit, that would mean that the car in one of the, in this, in this gap in question, the car had actually only done 500 miles or so. Now, if that car that we have was not a convertible car, I would question that dramatically. Given that it's a convertible, and given I don't think it was even a full year that it's done that mileage because it's changed owners, right, in that time, the MLTs have been done a bit quicker, right? It's been re-MLTed, whatever, part of the sale. I don't know. I'm still learning cars, guys. Because of that, it's really plausible that that would be true. The other thing that is very plausible that that would be true is somebody would have had to have done, I think it was 55,000 miles in one year in that car. And I can't remember how many miles that works out at per day, but when I say per day, I mean seven days a week, right? You know, it's not feasible. Again, I'll put the numbers on the screen. It's not really feasible, which would lend true to what this guy is saying. Now, as of right now, we have not had the ECU checked. This car does have warranty for 18 months, by the way. We got really good with it. We're supposed to get about six months. We actually got 18. Um, so that's awesome. Literally awesome. Only covers the big things, obviously, but if it had more mileage on it and it died, probably maybe be covered. I don't know. Whatever. You could probably get that tested and win anyway. So it hasn't been checked. The ECU has not been checked. And that's kind of up to Ben. Let's be honest. It's not really up to me. But what this guy's saying does massively check out. Um, it panicked me, to be honest, because obviously you're pairing that with him going, oh, we mysteriously don't have the service history. And I was like, oh my God. But what I think has happened is, because that car was sat, not for sale for ages, but we really should have missed out on it, to be honest, because the cars, it's like everything nowadays, it goes quite quick, right? Hang on, is this gonna go overboard? Yes, it's going a little bit longer. I'm nearly done, guys, don't worry, I'm finishing up now. Cars nowadays go quite quick, so we really should have missed out on it. And what I think has happened is other people in the UK, because other people will do this normally, they will look up the reg because you can, and they will see that. So a lot of other people going to buy that car will have looked that up and gone, oh shit, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. The garage has fantastic reviews, by the way. 
And I want to say this, I want to say this because I did do the extra mile checking because when I couldn't speak to Ben, I didn't know what the tea was. I was doing some outside research, right? I knew where this guy lived. I knew how far his garage was away. I looked at all the other cars in his garage. I checked all their MLTs. I checked everything about it. I checked all the reviews just to make sure none of the other odometers looked weird or anything like that. This was the only car where that was a problem. All the other cars were very transparent. I checked everything, guys, literally. I checked everything, everything, the whole thing company's house, you name it, I check. I'm good at this, right? I'm very good at this because of the whole horse scenario. I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what to do. But anyway, I checked all that. It Literally nothing out of place at all. The guy's got a great rep. Um, so as it stands, that maths does check out. Ben hasn't done anything about that. Um, so I think he's, he's, he's happy with that solution. Um, it is what it is, I suppose. I can't make him check for that. That is entirely up on him. And there you have it. I have been driving that car a lot, by the way. It is so cute. I can't, oh, I can't even tell you. It's so cute. I've been driving it quite a lot um, to the avail of, of a few people, to be honest. I don't think my parents are very happy about it. But honestly, the car I drive when I learn in, it's, it's not that dissimilar in terms of like engine power and stuff like that. It just isn't. So I've been driving that a lot and I've, I've got so much better from driving. Like I drove here today, obviously supervised. I drove here, I've drove to see my horse several times. Like, I've driven so much, my confidence has shot up in like one week. To the point where yesterday, a little other update for you, my instructor said, here you go, book your driving test. And by the time you do it, because it might be a couple of months, I'm gonna try and move it forward, forward, forward. So how good is that, guys? <coughs> I'm literally choking on this old ass dust. It's horrible. But yeah, that's where we're at with the car. So there is a car there that if I'd like to purchase it from Ben when I when I can drive, I can do that and it would be my car, um, which is obviously something I think I'd like to do. I've driven it. It's not like I don't know the car. Um, it's very, very cute. It's not the best for long drives, obviously, but you don't really get that kind of car for a long drive. Whatever. I'm never going to drive that far. Unless I was visiting my parents, fine. But that's like one trip every few months. All my errands are very, very local. You know what I mean? So it's not a problem. So that is my update for you. I thought I would tell you that little story. I don't know what's going on with the insurance. I know that we've had the payouts, so that's fine. We're all right. Um, but I think the, in terms of the claim and everything, <coughs> apologies guys, that's still ongoing. Like literally Ben gets like angry messages about solicitors and stuff from this guy's side. And it's like, this guy is clearly smoking something. Clearly he was the day on the roundabout. I don't know why he thinks he's gonna win. So that can just drag out for ages. Who even knows? But it doesn't matter because we've got what we wanted. And I've effectively got a car that I could never have dreamed of having. Hey, because honestly, <laughs> it got quite poetic when the crash happened. And I'm not a, a poetic whatever person. I'm Generally, I'm just not. But you can't help but think that way sometimes because a few things happened in one week. When that did happen, we were both kind of like, well, this is a sign. This is a sign this doesn't happen. This, you know, life's trying to tell us something. Um... And we, we joked on for a good few days, like, oh, maybe it's because we're not supposed to do this. Maybe it's because we're not supposed to do that. Maybe maybe that car was going to kill one of us and that's why it, it needs to go and blah, blah, blah. It got very poetic very quickly. And that was mainly just us trying to feel better about the fact that we had a car for several hours and then it just got written off. Car got picked up. Apparently the guy that picked it up was like, this is a really nice car. It's immaculate. And Ben was like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's beautiful because we just drove it out of the garage. <coughs> So guys, I'm coughing because of the dust from this really nasty substrate. Absolutely not sexy. Not even a little bit. But anyway, that is my update. So it's kind of like a story time, kind of like an update. Hopefully you followed that. Um, feel free to leave criticism if you wish down below. I don't really need to ask for it at this point. People on the internet do. Um, just remember, I'm at a certain point in my life. I don't have children. I don't have to play by the rules. I learned this one more recently than not, actually. I, I don't have to live my life the way that I'm supposed to. And I'm enjoying doing that a lot, actually. I find that very fulfilling. So leave whatever comments you wish. Uh, if you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But again, I'm not, I'm kind of new to this, so I don't know everything. So I might not be able to answer some things. But anything you'd like to leave below, please let me know. Let me know what you think about black cars with tan leather. Uh, am I alone in that or is that hot? Is it hot? I feel like it is hot. Maybe it's just me. I just love tan leather, you know? Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will give you, obviously, driving updates and shit like that. Hey, maybe this is like the horse thing 2.0. We have this weird guy that is trying to get Ben, I don't know, at fault for this claim. If I do find anything out, obviously I'll let you know. 
and we will chat about it. But until such time, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will love you and leave you, and I will see you next week for some, some favourites of mine. I think we have top 10 favourite philodendron for you next week. I know because I just filmed it before this video. So I will see you then. That's it, guys. I will love you and leave you, and have a great weekend. Bye.